Hello all, I am Maggie Baskell, and in this session we are again joined by Doug Koontz. We are working him hard this morning. For those of you who are just joining us, Doug is the Carrier Access Manager here at Nextech, and he helps provide fiber transport and carrier solutions all across the United States. So I'll now turn this back over to Doug for this network monitoring session. Thank you, Maggie, um, for the introduction. Um, and I apologize for those that you had to set through my presentation twice, so hopefully uh, I won't bore you. Um, we talk about network monitoring on the last presentation, but I have a different uh, spin on it. I believe network monitoring should be as simple as uh, home automation. And then in today's presentation, I'm gonna compare my journey in implementing a home automation to network monitoring and how we can simplify it. And a new product we call Not Cloud that we believe is gonna simplify uh, network monitoring. So, get my clicker working here, apologize. Um, I've always been fascinated with home automation, kind of a techie guy, I've got all the gadgets, my parents, my in-laws, my kids, yeah, even my kids are amazed at how many apps I have on my phone. I think I'm up to seven or eight pages of apps. I just added one last night. But home automation has always been at my heart. Uh, electronics background, it's just, it's just natural. And we've got to have an app for everything. So uh, my first venture in what I call smart home was cameras. Um, I needed, I wanted cameras. Didn't need, I wanted. My wife said, you want, you don't need. She wasn't really on board with uh, adding cameras into our home, certainly not inside. You know, we uh, doesn't want, you know, big brother looking at us. Yeah, but I was, I convinced her that let's put some cameras on the outside of the house. So we'll look at the front yard, maybe the backyard, see what's going on. Uh, so when you start looking into the uh, camera market, you know, Nest was, was out there early on and they had a great outdoor camera. Uh, Ring came along and you heard a lot about the Ring doorbells and uh, while I was looking the Ring um, uh, floodlight camera which you see in the bottom right hand corner of the screen was just being introduced. There wasn't a lot of reviews yet. It looked like the great product because you could talk back and forth. It brought the lights on at dark if, if it seemed motion so you could capture uh, what was going on within your yard. Uh, but it was just so new, I wasn't sure about it. You know, Arlo was coming out with a camera. The price point on it was was great, uh, but it does run on batteries. So I'm like, I don't want to have to crawl up in my eaves or wherever I'm placing these to replace batteries or recharge them. I'm really confused on what to do. And a lot like our NMS systems, there's a ton of great NMS systems out there. And you could spend days uh, evaluating them and trying to find the best one. Um, so, you know, that's why I'm comparing today home automation to um, network monitoring systems. Um, in my venture, you know, I'd stopped at Best Buy, you know, we don't have a Best Buy here in Northwest Kansas, but anytime I could get to a city that had a Best Buy, I would stop in and kind of browse around, try to figure out what I was going to do, you know, and I don't know how many times I stopped at a Best Buy and I got that one rep that didn't really know what was going on. You know, his expertise was somewhere else that I didn't know. So coincidentally, I was in Wichita at the camper show and I stopped by Best Buy. My wife tired of me stopping by Best Buys, but we found the guy, Joe, that knew cameras. He explained the nest. He sprang the ring. He explained the Arlo. He explained everything. You know, what's your future? What do you want to do with this? Well, I knew I wanted a Nest thermostat and I knew I wanted all the other products, maybe uh, home security, smoke detectors. You know, I'm a volunteer fireman, but we don't respond that well. Uh, I shouldn't say that, uh, but it takes a while for us to get uh, from our jobs to the fire station and back. But I want to be able to know early detection. So I want smoke detection, carbon monoxide detection. I want notifications and it's got to have a great app. Well, fast forward, I ended up with Nest. Uh, they actually had a, uh, a buy, buy two for one package or a, a package of two cameras that I bought perfect. I put one in the front yard, put one in the backyard. I even put little uh, rubber things to hide the white because it matched my brick. So nobody even really knows that that camera's in my front yard. 
and I was pumped. I got them installed, and they're up and running and operational. And uh, that first night, gosh, it was like sleepless in Seattle, right? Alert. Somebody's in your front yard. In fact, on the last presentation, I got several alerts. My wife was in the front yard. Uh, but anyways, uh, that night, numerous alerts. Every time a dog was in the yard or a cat walked by or the neighbors drove by, it's amazing how many cars are on your street. And I live at the end of the street uh, and all these notifications, you know, much like our NMS systems, right? We get an NMS system, we turn it on. It's a great system. It tells us everything that's going on within that particular manufacturer. And that first night, nobody sleeps. That first week, nobody sleeps. Eventually, you just ignore, you ignore, you ignore, and you're probably getting major alert, major alert, but it's just overwhelming. No different than what I had. So I was bound to fix that. I can't live with this. My wife was upset. She didn't, she wasn't a big camera supporter to begin with. So I quickly learned I need to set up a geofence. So I went in and set up a geofence this way. When the trash truck comes early in the morning, he's not going to set it off. My trash cans will sit there at the corner of the yard. Um, if my neighbors are coming and going, I don't see them. I thought I had it all figured out, right? So that night, going to sleep, sleep soundly. Well, the thing I didn't account for was the dog barking next door because the, uh, the cameras actually have audio. They can pick up an alert off of audio. Cat walking through the yard. I even had one time where I had a bug, like a fly or something. Man, they are big when they actually on the, the screen uh, looking at themselves in the mirror apparently but i was still getting numerous alerts and again no different than our nms systems alert 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 and i hear that from so many people as i travel is you know just page after page after page well that's what i was getting so i did some more fine tuning nest uh i was loving them to death they had a uh, people detection so i should act i could set up my alerts so that only when people were detected in my geofence would I receive an alert. Perfect. Uh, that eliminates the dog barking next door, eliminates the stray cat, eliminates the bugs on the lens. Perfect. So fast forward to today, I've been migrating, uh, I, I've been managing uh, the system with that geofence and the people detection. It, it hiccups once in a while, but I'd rather it false alarm me than not alarm me at all. So wife and he's been starting to buy it at this point. But uh, so I was all in with Nest. I had the cameras in the front yard, cameras in the backyard. I had my thermostat, uh, actually got for Christmas. I'm probably the only guy that put a Nest smoke detector on his Christmas list, but I got a smoke detector. Thank you, uh, mother-in-law, uh, for my smoke detector. And I was sitting there. Perfect. Life was good. And then lo and behold, Nest is acquired by Google. Now, I wasn't sure to think, is this a good thing or a bad thing? The only thing I could think of is every time there's an acquisition in the telecom market, you know, equipment manufacturer gets bought by another equipment manufacturer or an NMS system gets acquired or whatever it is, my experience, and maybe yours the same, is the service and support goes down and they may even phase out those products. So here I am vested in Nest. I'm like, well, no, what did I do? I should have bought the ring, right? Because I, all I hear on uh, TV is the ring doorbell or ring this, and you don't hear Nest anymore. Google took over. It's like, is Google taking over the world? And Amazon was coming on, and you couldn't even buy Nest on Amazon anymore, right? If I needed to add a, an accessory, can't even get there. So I was all in, and I'm thought, no, no, forklift upgrade. I'm going to have to redo everything very much like the telco business uh, when we see acquisitions. Well, I waited it out. I actually looked and was gonna go out and sell on eBay and start over and find my research, but lo and behold, they all started getting along. So we go out to works with Alexa, Hey Google, Siri, all of these started working together. Perfect. So I didn't have a lost investment. I was excited. So everybody's talking i'm starting to grow my system so i added a weather station love it i can tell what the uh weather is at my house anywhere in the world uh added a ratio my uh, boss steve riot you've seen him talk earlier he introduced me to the ratio smart sprinkler system uh so it really had no buttons on it everything was app driven you know me i love apps love to be able to control that what's going on 
And uh, you see, I added the, the other NAS products, but these devices started talking no different than what we want to see our systems in our uh, uh, network start talking. So my weather station would talk to my ratio. My ratio I had set up so that if the wind was more than 12 mile an hour, I need to do a wind skip because of the evaporation. I'm gonna lose half of my water uh, just through evaporation. Uh, if it rained, you know, how many times have you gotten up, if you are a sprinkler system owner, that you got a torrential downpour at midnight. And it's like, oh, I need to go shut the sprinklers off because you know, they're gonna water and I don't need it flooded and run down the streets or I gotta save water. Water's a precious commodity, correct? So the ratio does that for me. If I see a quarter inch of rain or if it's predicting rain, it'll actually look at the forecast uh, if, and see if it's supposed to rain or if we've had a quarter inch rain, let's do a, a sprinkler skip. So perfect. My nest even talks to the ratio so that if I have a smoke uh, uh, sensor going off, uh, I can actually, it'll, it'll alert me on the app and say, hey, you got a fire in your house. I can actually look into the camera, say, is it is a false alarm? Is the wife cooking again or what's going on? If it is a true fire, I can activate the ratio. So the ratio would go into a cycle mode. It would actually cycle the sprinklers around my house to keep the fire from spreading until the fire department can get there. So everything's talking again, life is great. Um, and you know, our NMS systems should be this way as well. So if we compare, you know, all of the different manufacturers uh, of NMS systems out there, and there's some great systems out there. PRTG, we use that internally. Uh, Calyx has got a lot of great products. Ocular guys, I've talked to them about them. Solar Winds, we use these products, uh, systems within our, our uh, network ourselves. Uh, no different than all of the uh, home automation systems and, uh, and how they all work together. So why can't our NMS systems all work together? So all of these NMS systems, we talked about the swivel chair approach in our previous uh, discussion and happened to be experts in all of those systems. And we needed that single pane of glass. Uh, we talked about uh, seen as being that single pane of glass alarming from all devices, all systems into that single pane of glass, ability to build on alarm detail, multiple notification platforms. You know, we need to be able to support everything. So that's great product, great product, right? We talked about the clarity and building uh, alarm clarity in the descriptions, making uh, SNMP traps simple. But we talked about raw traps can be confusing. Uh, raw traps at the to the to the to the naked eye is, is very difficult to read. You, it's hard to make that out, especially if they're coming in via text. But if we add the appropriate MIBs, uh, which not everybody is comfortable with, right? We can add the per, uh, appropriate MIBs and we start building some detail. And the secret sauce that we talked about was that Cordell uh, system and being able to simplify that. Well. We talked about our knock in the last presentation and not everybody um, as we traveled and, and um, I got to give kudos to Jimmy Todd. He's not on, actually on the webinar, I don't think today, but he had a dream that we needed an entry level uh, network monitoring system. And, and, and Justin McClung, if you're out there, you're gonna applaud me for saying this, but because I said I would never do it, but he had this dream of a knock in a box. We needed a entry level, knock solution that telcos, small telcos could do that would be easy to implement, so simple that it's almost a plug and play. Uh, so with that, knock cloud is what Next Tech brands is. We developed a simplified NMS system based off of the CNAS system. So CNAS manufactured by Cordell, a great system out there. We have a ton of those units out there. Uh, they were the heart of our knock um, and does everything. But we really wanted to get a, a more simplified system that would just be kind of a plug and play. And it needed to be mobile friendly. CNAS is mobile friendly, but we wanted a, a dashboard that would just give us a, 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 a snapshot of what was going on within the, uh, the network. So easy to set up, easy to operate, that was the key. Uh, we needed to have voice, text, and email notifications because not every system does that. Um, needed to be mobile friendly. We showed you the uh, dashboard from the cell phone. That's exactly what it looks like. You can actually scroll down and click on each of the different events. Um, 
We talked about user-friendly dashboard, uh, integrated ticketing. In the last session, we talked about the importance of ticketing. And again, if those that are just now joining us, uh, we all have uh, ticketing systems for our business and residential customers, but those don't always lend well to um, our core network. So we felt it was important to give um, our, our customers a ticketing system that they could log and track tickets on their core network uh, rather than just kind of track them in their heads. Uh, we felt it needed to be a cloud-based you know, uh, system. We didn't want the uh, customers to have to purchase equipment or set up fees or anything like that. And it needed to complement the other systems. Again, we're not here to replace the PRTGs or the cacti's or things like that. We're here to complement and bring all of those systems under, under one pane of glass and it needed to be vendor neutral. Uh, we talked about, I just talked about no hardware to purchase. We're actually including a virtual or a physical um, Cordell ISD 4000, the alarm collector we talked about in the first presentation uh, with this service. Um, it's got the extended SNMP capabilities. It gets to, for traps or it can even do SNMP gets. So if you've got stuff like cacti, you can go out and pull those. Uh, we wanted to, most of those manufacturers, the MIBs and associated rules, we've, got, we've gotten so good at that and all the different manufacturers, we've built that in. So there's, you know, we've done a lot of that heavy lifting. It's a Linux platform and we've got security. So it's got the SSH and the radius security uh, built in to take care of that. This is a snapshot of the uh, web version of our dashboard. I showed you the uh, um, mobile dashboard earlier, but the browser dashboard here, it shows you the critical alarms. Now keep in mind, this is a demo screen. So these numbers aren't actually real. Uh, we wouldn't typically see 231 critical alarms and zero major alarms, but each one of those alarm events, I can actually go click on and it'll bring them up or tickets. I can, it'll take me directly into the ticketing system so I can see which, what tickets are all, are all open. Uh, with that, you know, we move into our alarm screen. Uh, these are current alarms that are uh, happening within the network and you see the, the sorting capability up above. <clears throat> we can sort them based off of uh, status, uh, severity. We talked about critical, major, minor, or observational type alarms. Um, we can sort by dates. Uh, when did they go into alarm? Maybe when they went after alarm. Sometimes we use this to help troubleshoot. Uh, did they clear by this time? Or message, you know, if, I, if I'm looking into an Ascidian or a Calyx or a Brocade or, you know, particular manufacturer, I can actually um, type in that manufacturer or low power or generator, you know, whatever type of uh, activity we expected to see within that, uh, that alarm, we can sort and see what those are going on. So um, the next step was the devices. So we have built in I mean, pages and pages of devices that we've pre-configured uh, within here. Um, we can actually configure the devices by region. So for instance, in Next Tech, we've got, you know, several regions where technicians are on call and uh, maybe uh, certain devices, you wouldn't want to alert one group of techs if it's a hundred miles away, you would alert maybe a different uh, group of techs. So we felt it was important to have regions built into the devices and to the alarms. Uh, we talked about the uh, integrated ticketing system. So it's in there, right? We can give it a ticket number. Uh, so if we're working with somebody, we can actually give them a ticket number to revert back to. Uh, somebody called in on the phone, we can give them that ticket. Maybe it's a wireless carrier or a bank or a hospital or whatnot. Uh, is the status open? Uh, who opened, who's the contact, you know, who called in and maybe initiated that? Uh, when it started, the location, uh, this happens to be at the location of uh, Galatia. Um, the end, you know, and device name, but it gives us that information and uh, who the, who, who that opened. And we'll, we, we will add notes onto that after we say, you see the detail, we have a fiber cut. And as we update that tickets, those uh, notes would, would all um, stack up there. So then we go into notification. Um, we want to be able to uh, by rule, by device, by equipment, by region, 
create notifications. And what we have here is uh, we'll do a receive alarm and you can see down there by the number one that I put myself in there is it's going to notify Doug first. And then I didn't have room to put everything on here because it's a lot longer. We can do an escalation list. So let's first send Doug a notification and it's based off of my user preferences. And we'll talk about user preferences here just shortly, but we'll send him a notification. If he doesn't respond within a certain number of minutes, you can see it's zero. So he uh, you know, if, if I needed five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, if Doug doesn't respond, let's escalate that. We can go down to the next uh, user, whoever needed be, to be alerted and so on and so forth until I suppose it gets to the boss man, Jimmy Todd, which I don't think we probably want to happen. But talk about user management, user management. Uh, we want, just, you can see how simplified it is. I can set up my own uh, name, my email, uh, my voice number, my SMS number. I can choose, do I want email notification, voice, text, and daily summary. You know, we send out a daily summary of what happened uh, in the last uh, 24 hours. Do I want that? Do I not want that? You know, it's very, very user-friendly. Um, my hope um, in the future builds is we're going to have time of day uh, notifications. So example, some of the enhancements that we're talking about uh, maybe technicians would want SMS notification during the day, but maybe at night they'll sleep through SMS notifications or email notifications. Maybe we want voice uh, notifications at evening. So uh, that's something that we're being talking about. You know, the one thing that's cool that, you know, from a service provider perspective, we've built this simplified NMS system that complements all of the other manufacturers out there, easy to deploy, but as we see enhancements that are necessary, um, we're in charge of the development team. We can we can make those changes. So um, we talked about simplified smart notifications, and you know I compare to my home. You know if I had somebody in my front yard, it's sending me my camera send me alert somebody in your yard. Smoke alarm, hey there's a fire detected. Uh, we talked about the water skips. You know garage door. I didn't talk about my garage door. I found out recently that I got a smart garage door. And uh, it's got an app and uh, we left our garage door open and, you know, that's you, you just almost feel naked when you wake up in the morning and you find out you left your garage door open all night. You know, in western Kansas and I live next to a, a, a wheat field, you know, I, I sometimes think of snakes and smoke, uh, skunks and rats that may get in there. So I actually found out that my garage door has an alert on it so that if it's open after 10 p.m. it alert me. So that's kept me from leaving my uh, my fire, uh, my, my garage door open. And then my fire stick, you know, it's actually, I can say, Hey, Alexa, show me the front yard. I can do that. Why can't our NMS systems be that simple as well? And they can with not cloud, we can have those high temp alarms and they'll tell us that the Hey CO has a high temp alarm. Uh, we can show optical low power alarm and which device it's coming from without having to look through all the noise. Dying gasps, you know, a lot of the new equipment manufacturer out there, before as power is cut, it'll have the ability to send that last bit of dying gas and, hey, I lost power, I lost power. And uh, so you know that it's actually a power failure rather than drive somebody out there. We can, you can call the power company and report an outage. Generator running, why would you care if the generator? Well, you know, we test our generators on, uh, on Tuesday, I think at 9 a.m. You know, if it's Friday evening and the generator's running, we probably know there's a problem or maybe the generator failed to run. We can actually set up so that if the generator didn't run on Tuesday at 9 a.m., because some of our generators are remote and you don't want to have to drive out there, uh, we can check on that. Or device failure, maybe we can send out, look for heartbeats. If we don't see that heartbeat within a certain period of time, let's send a notification. So that's what I call smart notifications. Um, and you know, I'm comparing it to home automation. I hope I didn't, uh, hope you enjoyed that presentation. So. Uh, with that, uh, Maggie, I'm going to turn it back to you. I don't know if we have any questions out there. Just a reminder, you can put them out there as you have. Um, but I have a couple for you, Doug. How long are those alarms stored for? Uh, we store them uh, just like the previous presentation because we're using a lot of the same uh, guts. Uh, it saves it for uh, one year. And we'd like to keep those for a year just because uh, if we see some activity within the uh, network, uh, we usually if there's an event that happened, there's 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 a 
cookie crumb or a trail, the breadcrumb trail that led up to that event. If we can go in and evaluate that data and look at that trending, we can go in and uh, create a rule or an alarm so that next time we see that behavior, we can alert. So good question. Okay. All right. So then you also in your presentation talked about the simplified pricing model. Could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, and that comes down to, to Jimmy Todd's uh, uh, desire to have what he called a knock in a box and uh, basically a flat rate, um, no equipment to purchase, no setup fees, uh, just a simple monthly fee. Uh, we don't want people to count devices on your network. A lot of the systems out there are based off of endpoints. How many endpoints? How many, how many devices are you monitoring? And we really didn't think it was fair to charge somebody with a thousand endpoints. You know, let's say we had two companies with a thousand endpoints each. And this network was manufactured or designed very well, but the other one wasn't designed very well, but they're still paying the same price. Uh, we wanted a flat rate that uh, would be easy for uh, customers, you know, to manage and implement themselves. Uh, if somebody wants to actually talk about pricing, we can certainly get offline and do that or send us, send me a email and we can do that. But it's a simple monthly fee, no equipment to buy or maintain, uh, no license to, to manage, so. 